Hey guys, you're truly Kevin Grace. I'm here in Austin, Texas at Texas Cemetery, paying my respects to a baseball player slash manager who passed away in 2017. That man, Don Baylor. I remember him uh, since I'm from Baltimore, um, him being on the Orioles. He made his debut in September of 1970 uh, with the Baltimore Orioles. and. Later, he went on to play with the California Angels. I remember actually him on the Angels and I'm going to a game and seeing him play uh, with the Angels. He played on uh, various other teams such as the Yankees and the Red Sox. Um, in 1987, he was on the Twins and he wound up uh, getting a World Series ring that year. And then uh, uh, he ended his career with the Oakland Athletics. Um, he was manager for the Colorado Rockies and in 1995 he was the National League Manager of the Year and he also was a, um, a manager for the Cubs as well but he's buried here he passed away like I said in 2017 in 2003 he was diagnosed with myeloma and uh, like I said he wound up passing away at 868 in 2017 uh, he's buried here it's this beautiful headstone his wife will be laid to rest, uh, Rebecca, whenever she passes away. And you can see on here it says uh, Don Baylor Groove. That's his nickname. Uh, proud father, grandfather, native, uh, Austin and Knight, um, beloved husband, brother, cousin, uncle, deacon, teammate, friend, mentor, God's cheerful, cheerful giver, humble servant. All the love our heart could hold says at the bottom but uh, this is his burial spot right here he's not far from uh, the gentleman that was the American sniper uh, Kyle you remember him I'll do a vlog on him as as well uh, updated one but uh, anyway this is the great Don Baylor you can see on this side is another part of him. This is him as an angel baseball player. But yeah, you can see all of his stuff on there. 19 years, major league playing career in 1979, American uh, League All-Star. That was when he was with the um, California Angels. 1983, 85, 86, Silver Slugger Award, uh, 1985, 86. American League designated hitter award, World Series champion, 1987, Minnesota Twins, 1979, most valuable American League player, and 1995, Major League uh, Manager of the Year in National League, and he was a 1985 Roberto Clemente Award winner. But yes, yeah, got his signature there and his uniform number this is really really nice if you like this video please subscribe down below and feel free to leave any comments about Don Baylor first manager of the Colorado Rockies has died Don Baylor was diagnosed with multiple myeloma 14 years ago he managed the Rockies for six seasons including taking them to their first playoff appearance and was awarded manager of the year in 1995, as a player, he made his name as a power hitter. Baylor was just 68 years old. Don Baylor grew up in Austin, Texas, during a time segregation in Southern schools was slowly coming to an end. He was just one of three black students in his junior high and was the first African-American to play football at his high school. Growing up uh, during that time in the 60s, it was uh, difficult, but yeah, I lived through it. You know, you had to fight your way through certain things. Uh, as I 
got older, I found out about Jackie Robinson, the things that he had to go through at the major league level, and I thought, you know, my time was the hardest and the toughest time, but there's somebody else that paved the way for me to play Major League Baseball, it was Jackie Robinson. That experience toughened Baylor. As a result, he excelled. He was selected by the Baltimore Orioles in the second round of the 1967 amateur draft. He arrived in Baltimore full-time in 1972, where he enjoyed four productive seasons before a trade to Oakland in the spring of 1976. The next offseason, Baylor signed as a free agent with the California Angels, a team desperate to turn around their misfortune. That was an attitude change, no question. It's not going to be the doormat of uh, the West any longer. That's what we set out to do. I know that was what Mr. Autry set out to do. Baylor's power and presence increased each season in Anaheim. 25 homers in 77 was followed by 34 home runs and 99 RBI in 78. Then 1979 happened. You can't describe how good he was. I mean, whenever we need a big hit or a big home run or big run driven in, Don Baylor is the guy that we look forward to doing this stuff. His consistency, April 1st through September 30th, he was the same. I don't think he had a slump. I don't think he ever uh, had a bad month. Baylor drove in 28 runs in 23 April games. He followed that up with seven home runs with 23 RBI in May, hitting at a 354 clip. Because I always have been a perennial slow starter in April. Once I got through April, I'm off and running. In July, he enjoyed one of the best months in Angels history, batting 349 with 11 home runs and 34 RBI. Carew was hitting in front of me. He set the table for me a lot of times, getting guys over for me and kind of forced me into, okay, bearing down, knocking in that run. On August 25th, 1979, Baylor was front and center in one of the most extraordinary games in franchise history. In Toronto versus the Blue Jays, with no cameras on site to record, the Angels exploded for a team record 24 runs. Donnie drove in eight of them. I hit a grand slam. Next time up, I hit a three-run homer. I had seven RBIs and two at-bats. Double knocked in another run, so three at bat, so that was just an incredible day. In 1979, Baylor played in all 162 games for the only time in his career. He finished with a career-high 36 homers and led both leagues with 139 RBI and 120 runs scored while hitting 296. He received 20 of a possible 28 first place votes in becoming the Angels' very first league MVP. You, know, you need to have a guy have a monster year in the middle of your lineup to have a good season. Everything kind of revolves around that center of your lineup and that guy's got to be strong and carry a lot of weight and, and Donnie Baylor did that year for sure. Baylor lifted the Angels up onto his broad shoulders and carried the team to their first West Division crown. Although they would falter in the first round of the playoffs against his former team in Baltimore, Baylor established himself as one of the best players on the field and in the clubhouse. He was the best teammate I ever had. Don just kind of took me under his wing as a rookie. I appreciated it at that time and I appreciated it throughout the rest of my career too. He, he was a good guy. He was a big man for us in the locker room and on the field because he had all of us check our egos at the door. This wasn't about, you know, us. It was about 25 guys on the team and, and the coaches. When you get a guy that can put those rules down and says, hey, this is the way this ball club is going to be, you know, you have to respect that. Following another loss in the 1982 playoffs, this time to the Brewers, change was inevitable on a veteran ball club with one of the highest payrolls in the league. That offseason, Baylor signed as a free agent with New York. I think there was a void created when Donnie left. Don Baylor's career here was relatively short for the impact that Don Baylor made. And I think that that's one of the things, when I, I look back, I talk about Don Baylor as if he was here for, you know, 10, 12 years. And it really was a short period of time, but in 1979, the year he had, and what he did in 82, he best represented the Angels. 
In his final three seasons, Don would reach three consecutive World Series with three different teams, the first player to ever do so. His 1987 Minnesota Twins would bring him his only ring. In all, Baylor played in six cities, but he is most proud of his time here in Anaheim, where he helped usher in a new winning attitude. Now I've had all these years to reflect on it, to see how far this organization has really come. First class all the way, they've turned the corner. That's a first class operation. Jim, how about your memories of the man they called Groove? Well, you know, I met him uh, actually earlier than when he came to Baltimore because when I hurt my shoulder, I was down in the Instructional League in Clearwater for about seven, uh, seven weeks. So, you know, we used to have a, a, every Monday was an off day and we'd always play flag football on the, on the, uh, the beach. And I always made sure that Don was on my team. If you ever saw him, tremendous physical specimen. Um, and, I, you know, we're, we're on the field here today. I mean, it's a sad day, Tom and, and Rick, because I think anybody that, you know, either knew Don as a teammate or as a coach or as a manager um, or as a fan realized that he played the game. And Bobby Gritch and I were talking. I said, you know, he was a gentle guy, but he played with a, um, a ferocity that but played the game fair. And Bobby looked at me. Bobby Gritch said, you know what? He said, if you were a middle infielder, he said uh, he would uh, knock you on your rear end and then say hello to you at dinner. So, he, you know, he was a marvelous player, a, a great guy. Uh, I, I can't imagine that coming up, uh, you know, and playing winter ball down in Puerto Rico for Frank Robinson, that Frank, who was a similar type of player with, again, played the game the way it's supposed to be played, respected it and whatever, uh, didn't teach him a little bit of that. But, um, you know, again, when so you baseball, and I, and I mean everybody involved in this game loses somebody of that magnitude, it's a sad, dead day. Well, Jim, we appreciate your comments. I know you're going to talk more about Don Baylor during the telecast tonight with uh, Gary Thorne. Baseball Hall of Famer Jim Palmer there in the Madison uh, broadcast booth.